Power is gone, internet is gone. Now what? What do you do? This is RF Radio Network. Hey guys, this is Joe Tech from RF Radio Network, where we're connecting people through the power of radio. And today we're going to be talking about what if the internet and power really go offline? What do you do? Do you have a plan B? Do you have stuff in place? Things seem to be going in that direction. I think everyone should start focusing on what you need to do. Get HTs. Set them up with a frequency plan for your family. Start, start practicing simplex communication with one another. Find out how far they can work. <laughs> People with radios in their car, they're pretty much ready to go and set up you can set up VFO mode, pick a frequency that you're allowed on. Technically, in a real catastrophic event, who cares what frequency you're on? So, make sure you have radios, any type of radio, for either GMRS or FRS, which is good, does not require a license, and you can still communicate with your family close by. So you, if you set up camp or something like that, you have a form of radio communication. Cell phones and everything will be offline. So what I'm saying is, do not, people with mesh-tastic nodes are going to be shit out of luck. People with mesh-core nodes are going to be shit out of luck. The only people that may be working, depending on if they're dependent on the internet, is APRS. That will work over RF, long distances. However, if you're communicating with nodes between over the internet all those links will go offline so if you're focusing on solely internet based for communication you're done doesn't matter <laughs> that won't work so you gotta assume power is gone internet is gone now what what do you do you must have another form of of emergency communication plan ready to go my team is already we already have this completed we go by the 333 plan. Look it up. I'll have a link in the description below to get to that. The reason why I'm saying this is that because the 333 plan is well known. Everyone, every radio person should know of this plan. And with that information, you'll be knowledgeable enough to follow it. And if you set up your radio, like I recommend getting a radio that can do VHF and UHF, so then you can set up that radio to communicate on any of the frequencies on the 333 plan. Now, it's just a suggestion. Obviously, you can create your own frequency list, too, because some of these, most of these radios can handle 1,000 channels, right? Or 999. So you can set up the 333 plan for the beginning of the frequency list, and then the bottom half... Or the you know start from 999 and work your way up to have your own family frequencies if you so wanted to get away from the 333 plan so that's it I suggest I strongly suggest you start focusing on this scenario this is just a recommendation I'm not saying that the world's gonna end but you should always have something in place just in case you cannot rely on the internet you cannot rely on power and you must have a portable way to communicate with family members make sure you have solar panels ready to go make sure you have battery banks ready to go make sure you have enough power just in case something like this does happen you can do this that's a true prepper relying on mesh tastic mesh core or aprs which kind of is an, in its own entity, is silly. You must be off the grid communications and you must test that scenario on a more regular basis. Go to a park, communicate, walk the streets, communicate, pretend the shit has hit the fan. Not necessarily a nuclear war, but you need to be able to communicate and not rely on your cell phone. It must be this way only. Okay? So, what things won't work? What things won't work? Cell phone. Anything internet based. Simple. Everything will be offline. No more social media posts. 
Zella will be offline. Every goddamn POC radio will be offline. Every single one of them. So anything that's internet based will be gone. Literally gone. So that's why I make, I'm making this video. Trying to connect people through the power of radio. Telling people to get HTs. Mobile radios. Most people have mobile radios. Get them set up in your car. Because you have essentially a portable rolling power source. Gas powered. Make sure you have gasoline on hand just in case. Make sure you have a generator on hand just in case. Make sure you have a portable foldable solar panel kit as well just in case. You may, you get, you may need it. Also, which I do also recommend, which is kind of a little bit a little bit far-fetched but you never know a wind turbine you never know it may be cloudy you may not have enough power but it could be windy and a wind generator would also work 400 watts 800 watts just enough to charge your, charge your batteries you have to think outside the box and you know if you have a big enough vehicle you can put all the stuff in it there also you have to protect your equipment so make sure that you have your firearms ready to go. Yeah, I don't want to go there, but sometimes you might have to. Baseball bat is not a, something that's going to protect you. You need a firearm, unfortunately. It is what it is. Second Amendment states, you're lucky. People who are not in Second Amendment states, you may, may need a license, but just saying. You may need to protect your domain if if the shit really truly hits the fan. I don't like to go that route, but believe it or not, people like to steal in times of need such as this. In a true shit hit the fan scenario. Because then martial law will most likely be in effect. However, let's move back. <laughs> Sorry. Again, anything internet based would be offline. Do not rely on your cell phone to communicate. Make sure you have your family have radios. Simply because this will never fail. Aries, Racies, and FEMA all use HF high frequency to communicate. That'll always be used. People that are using CB 11 meters will be able to communicate across the world. CQ, CQ, DX, this is Triple Five, Long Island, New York, standing by. CQ, CQ, I'm at Triple Five, Triple Five, Zero Six Five, I got that Zero Six Five, I got you Zero Six Five. You're pounding my meter over here, pounding my meter, you're coming in great. This is Triple Five, Long Island, New York, QSL? QSL, Triple Five, you make a good share of your sale. Got you about Super 9, Super 9, down here to Bound. 73's to you, Copy that, copy that. What's your QTH? Come on. Yeah, down here in Alabama. About 45 miles. Go to Birmingham. Make sure you have enough water in your home. Make sure you have enough food, MREs. If you're truly into prepping, get away from mesh tastic and mesh core if one of these nodes go down you your link is gone if this primary hub which is connects to everybody everything is down do not i repeat do not rely on a internet based communication for <laughs> emergency communications it's just it's not feasible do not focus on that make sure you have a bunch of radios ready to go for simplex communication to talk with family members, friends, people who are into radio. Make sure you have a, make sure you have a plan in place for such scenario. Do not focus on anything else other than that. <clears throat> ham operators, if, if you are, obviously most ham operators, they do field day and they're communicating over RF and they're setting up antennas and they're doing this fantastic thing for such an event. Portable antennas setting up for field day. I mean, that's kind of sort of the scenario. They have battery, they have lithium polymer battery batteries. They have 12 volt lead acid batteries powering equipment. Poda, soda, things such as that. 
it's tr strictly 100% RF. Nothing is internet based. So get away from focusing on that kind of emergency communications and stick with RF, because this will never fail. Also VHF and UHF are gonna be very, very helpful and useful. RF radio communications is the way to go, period, the end. Make sure you focus on that wholeheartedly to get started on the prepping of the shit hits the fan, for real. And test out the scenario. Make sure it works. Don't say, I got it, and you don't test it. Make sure you test it. Make sure you do it, make sure it works. Just, you know, do simplex communication from base station to base station. No repeater. My repeater happens to be on a commercial tower that is protected by the federal government. So I'll be safe and I can, can cover pretty much all of Long Island for communications. However, you may not be in that same scenario. Make sure you find a, um, a low power repeater that you can throw up on a campsite and communicate with your friends and family, whatnot. You're gonna start to, you, you may have to do this. This is just something I recommend. But it's just trying to make you aware that these things, these pop radios are garbage. They're toys. All right, I ranted enough. If you guys like this video, give me a thumbs up. Comment below, tell me what you have done. I like to know, comment below. Take care and we'll see you next time where we're connecting people through the power of radio. I'm Joe Tech from RF Radio. Take care.